the next data type is our char list or our character list and as i have already explained the character list is created by using single quotes so let us create a variable called as characters and let us assign the value of octalium now as you can see i'm using single quotes right over here and we get back the value of octalium now let us do one thing let me copy this and let us go to our terminal and uh, inside my iex i can check for the information so i can use the inbuilt function of i and let me paste the character string right over here and let us see what kind of output we are getting so this time if you see the data type is actually a list last time when we were studying about strings the data type was a binary string but this is a collection of characters inside a list and if you want to see the raw representation so here it is now please note that as this is a list we have square brackets at the start and also at the end and as you can see each of the characters are also represented by their integer values so again the same thing goes 79 represents o then the value for c is 99 then for t it is 116 and so on so let us go back to our live book next let us see how we can add two character lists together so let me add a new block and here let me create a new character string and let me say hello and for adding or concatenating two lists together we have to use the double plus symbol and let me pass the characters value right over here and let us try to evaluate this cell and here we get the new value back as hello octalium just as a reminder for strings we were using the angle brackets but since this is a list that's why we are using the double plus symbol next we can also use an inbuilt function to check if the given characters are indeed a character list or not so again let me add a code block and here we can use the inbuilt function of is list and let us pass our characters inside of this one and let us try to evaluate so yes we get the answer as true and the last point is we can always check the code point so we can use a question mark and then we can use a character so the code point value of a would be 97 and if you check for o it would be 79 and so on so this was all about characters the next type that we are going to see is called as the process so let me take everything up and here let us add a block and we want to add a section for process and let us add a code block right over here now if you refer to my earlier videos so this was the video about processes in which i explained that all of the code is executed inside processes so these processes are also a valid type inside elixir and we can check the current process in which our live book is running so let's create a variable called as my PID. so the PID stands for the process id and we can use the inbuilt function of self and let us check the output of my PID after this one and let us see what kind of output we are getting so we get the output as PID is 144 now if you go back to our terminal and here let us check the process in which our iex is running so let me call the function of self and this time we can see that we have a different PID number the process id for our iex is 107 but if we go back to our live book we can see that our live book is running inside the process number 144 now processes and concurrency in elixir is a very huge topic and it requires its own dedicated tutorials but for this course let us go ahead and let us see the next type let us add a new section right over here so i want to add a new section and this section is all about our list let me take this thing a little up so the number one thing that you need to understand about list is that the list inside elixir are actually linked list and they are not your regular list so if you try to do operations like indexing it is not going to work and uh, just to be precise the list inside elixir are actually singly linked list so let us see how we can work with list inside elixir let us create a new code block right over here and let us create a list so this is our list and for a list you can see that we have the square brackets at the beginning and at the end and let us try to evaluate this cell and we get the list back 
Now again let me try and repeat that this list is not your regular array or not your regular list. This is a singly linked list. Let's do one small experiment and let us try indexing on this list. So let us create a new code block. And suppose if I try to see the element at the zeroth index. Now let us see what happens. And as you can see, we get an error. And we get this error because this list is actually a linked list and not your regular list. Now the reason that we have linked list inside Elixir is because linked lists are recursive in nature. Your regular arrays or your regular list, they are not recursive and they have to be saved continuous in your memory. But then how do we work with lists inside Elixir? Now there are a lot of mechanisms. First and the obvious one is by using recursive functions or we can also use a lot of inbuilt modules. So let me show you one module. Let me add a code block right over here and let us take everything up. Now we can use the module of enum and we can say that enum and we can use the inbuilt function at and let's pass our list and let us call the index as zero and let us see what kind of output we are getting. And here we can see that we get the output as A. So what we are doing is enum is actually an inbuilt module inside Elixir and at is a function which is defined inside the enum module. And here we are simply passing the arguments for the function. Let us go back to our IEX and let me clear up everything. Let me make some space from the top. And here if I write enum dot and if I press tab, here we can see that we have a lot of inbuilt functions for the enum module. And the function that we use is right over here at. Now this slash two actually means the arity. Now arity is nothing, it's just the number of arguments that your function can accept. In Elixir, we can actually overload our functions by using different parameters. So for example, you can see right over here, we have a function called as any. And for this function, we have two types. The first type is right over here. So this function takes only one argument. That's why the arity is one. And here we have the same function any, but this time it takes two arguments. So that's why the arity is shown as two. Now let me clear up all of these things. Now let me show you one more helper function inside Elixir. And the name of the function is H. So H stands for your helper. Again, if you want, you can use the parentheses or you can leave them out. And here we need to specify which module or which function do we want help for. So what this helper function does is it simply prints out the documentation for that module or for that function. So here we need to specify that we want to see the documentation for the module of enum and from enum we want to see the documentation of the function of add and here we get the documentation back. The first line that you can see right over here, this is all about your function definition. And you can see that the first parameter is actually a enumerable. The second one is the index and this function also accepts an optional argument by the name of default. And the default value for this parameter is nil. These two backslashes symbolize that this argument of default is an optional argument. And in case if this argument is not specified, then the default value would be simply nil. Next, we can see that we have a couple of examples right over here. So you can see that the helper function is very useful and I often use this function for reading the documentation inside my terminal. Now let us go back to our live book. And here let us play a little bit more with pattern matching and with our list. So let me create a new code block. Now if you refer our list, so our list has three different elements and we can use pattern matching to extract all of these elements. So let me show you how we can do that. So here let me create a couple of different variables. The first one should be called as first, second, third. You can call this parameters anything that you want. And on the right, I simply want to pattern match on the list. So what's going to happen is the same old thing. The left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. So the first thing is since this is a list on the left hand side, we do have a list and we are simply trying to pattern match on the different elements. So this a would be bound to our variable of first for the second your b would be bound and c would be bound to third let us check out the data inside second so let me call second right over here and let me take it up and also let us try to evaluate this cell and we get the value back 
as b now what happens if you don't want all of the variables and you simply want to ignore a couple of them at that time we can simply use an underscore to ignore the values so suppose i don't want the values of first and second then we can do like this so we can create a list since i want to ignore the first value i can use an underscore i also want to ignore the second value so let me put one more underscore the next i want to collect the third value so let me create a variable called as third and let us assign a list right over here so our list is a b and c now let us check the value inside third and let us try to evaluate and we get the value as c back so what happened is since we have an underscore that's why the value of a is simply ignored the same thing happens with b as well and finally the value of c gets bound to our variable of third next let me show you a couple of convenience function for working with our list so the first function is also called as head so let me show you what i mean so the head function simply takes the first value and returns it back so if we call the inbuilt function of head and let us pass our list to it and let us try to evaluate and as you can see we get the value of a back now similar to head we also have another function which is called as tail so let me create a new code block and the function is called as tnl now what a tail function is going to do is it is simply going to ignore the head value and it will return back all of the remaining values so let me pass the variable of list to this one and let us try to evaluate the cell and we get back the values of b and c there is also a shortcut method for doing this so let me show you how we can do that and this time we can simply pattern match on our list so here let us create a list and i want to pattern match the first value inside a new variable called as head h for head and then let me use a cons operator and then i can say that i want to collect all of the remaining values in a new variable called as tail and let me assign the value of list to this one next let us check the value inside our head and let us try to evaluate the cell and as expected we get a back now this pipe operator is also known as cons operator for working with our linked list next let us also check the value inside t so let me create a new code block and let me call the variable of t and as you can see we simply get back the remaining values inside our list 